we have a big warning. Big changes afoot for the silver price and gold price. Things are happening much more quickly now and on a much, much bigger scale. There's a best-selling author by the name of William, William Middlecoop. He wrote a book called The Big Reset. I listened to him earlier today when he talked about what's going on right now, right in front of us. 2023, September 23rd, that indicates we could be headed for some major, major turmoil and a major reset of the price of gold and silver. We talk about gold being boring, silver being boring. Oh, they don't move that much. They're just old relics that nobody cares about. What about Japan? You know that Japan is hitting all-time highs in the gold price right now. Do you know that Japan is the third largest economy in the world? But what's even more fascinating about what's going on in Japan is the fact... Wow, thank you, Mr. Shovel, for that awesome super chat from Denmark. Thank you. Japan is the demand... They've never had major demand for gold in Japan. And you know what? Right now, demand for gold products in Japan, feels like I'm giving a tongue twister, is through the darn roof. People are rushing to buy gold in Japan. Why? What? Who knows why? Anybody know? Put it in the chat. Why do you think people in Japan are rushing? There's a gold rush in Japan right now. I can't even do a Japanese impression. I know some Japanese people, but nonetheless, why do you think? Yeah, that's right. Inflation. They're having runaway inflation because the Japanese yen is going down in value. But let's shift over to another major, and don't worry, I'm not going to go down the China rabbit hole with you in this video, but we have to talk about China the metals prices in China right now are 6 to 10% higher than they are in the West. China has bought gold for the last 10 straight months, their central bank. Okay, They haven't bought, or the, no, I'm sorry, treasuries. In terms of U.S. treasuries they hold, they haven't held this low of a level of United States treasuries since 2009. So we've got big major changes going on when it comes to Asia and gold and silver as well. Things are changing massively. William Middlecoop talks about the fact that we are probably on the verge right now of a serious revaluation in the silver price and gold price. What does that mean? Does that mean $7,000 gold? Does that mean $75 silver? We'll have to see how it all plays out. But when we zoom out and look at what's going on in the world right now, and he's one of these fancy high-level guys who knows what's going on with the central banks, what the ramifications are, the high level, right? We buy silver. Maybe you buy some gold from the local coin shop. He's watching. He has his finger on the pulse of what the big central banks are buying. Poland, which is becoming a rather advanced economy, is buying huge amounts of gold right now. What does that tell us about the demand for silver and gold, right? What is that telling us? What about the Czech Republic and Hungary? They both, they're like, have increased their gold holdings tenfold. Now, what's, what's crazy, what's and this doesn't get any press, but this is a big, big, big deal when it comes to gold and central banks. And I'm sorry, I've got a giant cat who's... Hold on a second. Come here. Oh, come here. You guys. Oh, you guys haven't seen him for a while. <laughs> That's Jasper. I didn't know he was down here, but he... Uh, he just paid a visit. Now, anyway, big deal. Big, major deal that we need to recognize is going on. And it and it's it gets zero of course this will get zero coverage in the mainstream media. But the head central bankers 
for both the Dutch and the Germans. The head central bankers, and I want to make sure I say this cor correctly, said that they could use a gold revaluation to fix the balance sheets of their central banks. Guys, I, it's not that confusing. This is this is, this is an, a fascinating concept that that I've read somewhat in depth on, and something that we need to recognize. The Europeans, most of the European countries, all have a lot of gold. Spain, Italy, all of them all have. And it's and it's there. There was a research piece that was out just a few months ago that kind of showed that the amount of gold that each country has is very representative to the size of their economies relative to the other European countries. So the European countries are now starting to talk about using gold, right, to uh, to to re re revalue gold to fix their balance sheets. Gold, right, the tether. Right? And silver goes right there with it. And platinum goes right along with it as well. But isn't it, uh, to me, it's fascinating and it's exciting to think that uh, probably you could say due to natural market forces. We've talked about this before. Doesn't Mother Nature always win? I mean, isn't that something like we've learned since we were kids in science class? Mother Nature always, always wins. The forces of nature. And silver and gold are a force of nature. They're part of nature. They are the planet's money. They have been since man has been able to really recognize what money is and how it can be used for trade and and uh, uh, and 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 stores of value always right so now we're facing a period where silver and gold are being re-recognized for what they are the real forms of money the real base of 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 value in the world we know john exter you know john exter he worked for the Federal Reserve. We love to talk about John Exter. He was an economist for the Federal Reserve. He didn't die that many years ago. He made Exter's Pyramid. You need to check out Exter's Pyramid if you're a gold and silver investor because it explains the truth, the reality of what money is. And that is everything is based on this upside down pyramid on silver and gold. All the derivatives. I saw something crazy last night um gosh i almost forgot to tell you guys about this it was late at night i was half falling asleep but it was a presentation from visual capitalist about about the about the money in the world currency in the world and it showed like visually how much silver is and it was this little tiny dot and it showed how much gold was and gold was much much bigger right from a visual perspective the size of the of the gold but when you compare it to paper money, electronic money, when you compare it to the derivatives out there, it is over the top crazy, okay? We've got to recognize a couple key things, okay? The paper money, the electronic money, we like to call it unicorn fart dust. <laughs> so, whatever. Jerome Powell and the central bankers, they're running out of rope. They're running out of their ability to print, print, print. We, we know, we know that this debt situation, it is just completely unsustainable, the situation that the United States and the world in general has gotten itself into when it comes to debt. There's not enough money to pay off all the debt. The only option is to create more electronic money, print more money, however you want to say it. And at the end of the day, that will be uh, very good for the price of silver and gold, supportive for the price of silver and gold. You can't argue these things. It makes me, I get, I'm sorry, I get a little frustrated sometimes because we've been in this situation where things have gotten so darn crazy. I mean, it is just like crazy town, the situation that we're living in. And what you might get frustrated by this as well, that like most people just don't even know what's going on. And especially even more people don't want to talk about it or address how crazy the situation has become. And it's not just in the United States, it's all over the world. So Mr. William Middlecoop, 
you know, he proposes that we'll have a major big reset. Now, look, I think it's important for us to remember it can happen. It almost seems like an inevitability that it will happen, okay? Um, hold on. We got 100 thumbs up, you guys. I ring the bell 10 times for 100 thumbs up. That's one ring for every 10 thumbs up. It's an inevitability that this will happen, this reset, and that gold and silver will be able to reach their, their true value, their real value, because they've been suppressed, okay? Suppressed, suppressed, manipulated, suppressed by the competition, which has been the paper fiat money. There's been a concerted effort to push down the price of silver and gold. That's a fact. But like we talked about earlier, Mother Nature always, always, always wins. And I want you to think about how, how, and we touched on this at the beginning, this reset, what could trigger it. The system has grown so big and so fragile and so convoluted, thanks to all the money printing, thanks to all the derivatives, thanks to all the craziness that goes on out there. Think about this. Think about this. Why? in the world why in the world was everyone so on pins and needles last week about the fed including me everybody you know because the fed is like they're like the wizard of oz right why do we even have to have that why can't we just have real money back if we had real money backed by silver backed by gold the fed and all these tricks they play and oh we got to raise interest rates and we're going to do this repo reverse repo and we're going to do quantitative tightening and we're going to do quantitative easing and we're going to do all these and they're going to come up with that you we, you have not seen anything yet i guarantee you in the next year you mark my word i'm saying it right now i'll put myself out on a limb we're going to see at least two or three new Fed programs. They're probably, you know, sitting around the Fed right now thinking up names for these things, you know, like like monetary minutia or whatever they're going to call it, right? Transitory, like they were wrong about inflation. Temporary, like they were wrong about inflation. They're wrong about everything. And as this system has grown so big, and Mr. Middle, Middle Coop says the same thing, the crisis, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the turmoil within the system becomes more frequent and more severe each time it hits. But it gets even more <laughs> concerning when we, when we talk about a few more things that he wanted to bring up. Number one, the BRICS, right? The arrogant USA. Right? Arrogant Americans think, oh, the BRICS aren't going to amount to anything. Oh, the BRICS, you know, we kind of just, you know, shuffle it aside. Like, oh, we're not concerned about what's going on with the BRICS. We should be very, very concerned about what's going on with the BRICS. But we don't seem to be. We seem to just push it off to the side. Okay? Think about this. Saudi Arabia has basically turned down the oil spigot to the world, to the United States. And, and, not only did they do that, but they stopped buying U.S. treasuries. And what do you think that means? They stopped buying the United States debt. What do you think that means? Huh? Let me tell you what that means. Countries that are considered friendly to the United States, there's this membership club due you have to pay. And that's called, you got to buy United States treasuries. And the Saudis have stopped buying U.S. treasuries. Who else? China has stopped buying U.S. debt. Okay? And when we talk about that alone, all this crazy amount of debt that we have, 34 trillion, 17 trillion of it needs to be rolled over in the next two years. Guess what? China's not buying it. Saudi Arabia's not buying it. Those were two big sources of, of purchasing. And there was a third one, and they're not buying it now either. That would be Japan. And Japan was buying it with money they were printing up as well. I mean, it's like this big, crazy uh it's like a bunch of people on drugs trading stuff is what it feels like what's going on but those countries aren't buying okay who else isn't going to be able to buy treasuries or who else is going to be selling treasuries 
Well, we know that the government's going to be selling treasuries and separate from the government because it's not a part of our government. The United States Federal Reserve is selling treasuries as well. We could be coming to a big, big head very soon before we know it. Now, when it comes to the BRICS, are they going to destroy the United States? Are they going to annihilate the United States? Are we? No, most likely not. But we are moving into a world that is bifurcated and split. And think how different that is from, let's say, five years ago. I remember five years ago, you know, reading about what went on during the, the Great Depression and World War II and, and reading about how the world countries became very nationalistic. And I remember thinking... Well, that's we don't have that problem now. I mean, you know, everybody was trading China. Everybody was kind of sort of getting along pretty well. That's no longer the case right now, guys. I mean, the world is is in 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 uh, M Middlecoop brings this up. He says, and we don't want this, but he said it feels like much of what was going on in the world during the 1930s, during the period that led up to World War Two, and. On that subject, as we talk about conflict in the world, what the heck? You know, we don't talk about it. You know, I don't know if it's a, a non-favored subject on YouTube or or why, but we do have a, an actual major conflict going on right now in Europe. Take a step back. We maybe have become a little, have you become a little numb to that? We have uh, a major conflict between the West and the East right now in Europe. Are we setting the stage for a major reset, the gold price and the silver price? What will they do? You know, the, 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 it, it either happens by one of two means, either market forces force it to happen or the central banks revalue it. If the world uh, splits and we know that Russia, we know that China, we know all the BRICS, we know they all have been accumulating massive amounts of gold. Why are all these countries accumulating? Why are all these countries accumulating all this gold? Why is Hungary increasing their gold holdings by 10x? Is what they said. The Czech Republic, 10x. Poland. Why? Think about that. What is going to happen? Are we prepared? You know, we talked about that earlier today. Again, we won't go down that rabbit hole, but are you mentally and monetarily, M&M, &M, <clears throat> that's what us basement dwellers, <clears throat> that's what us basement dwellers like to remember, M&M, &M, monetarily and mentally prepared for what could be coming soon to us down the road because there is huge unstableness right now. Guys, we have a major conflict going on in Europe. We have the rest of the of the BRICS countries, the more than half of the world population saying that they're they're basically rebelling from the United States. This is is it happening? Could it be happening right now? It feels like it is. Um <clears throat> Let's talk about gold-backed currencies. Right? Even when we know that the German and the Dutch central bankers are talking about bringing uh, uh, re re revaluing gold to fix the balance sheets of the European central banks, we're talking about moving back towards gold-backed currencies. Middlecoop said... Uh, and I don't want to put words in his mouth. You can you can research him on your own and listen to what he says. But he says he's being contacted by people now in these banks that never would have contacted him in the past and asking him his opinion and writing things. So we could very well be moving toward that. Now, if you want to get yourself some gold or silver before it's all gone, go check out Pimbex. They are a channel sponsor. They make this possible that we can hang out here in the basement. Pimbex. P-I-M-B-E-X, online bullion dealer, gold, silver, platinum. Best prices around is what I found. I always encourage you to do your own research. Great reputation and great quality. Check out Pimbex, okay? Being trustworthy is paramount with a bullion dealer, and I think they check that box for sure. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about... 
Well, we got all kinds of stuff to talk about tonight. We're having a Saturday night party. I'm glad you're here. We're going to talk about. We're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how screwed up the the situation is in the world. Furthermore, in the economy, uh, we're going to talk about the the debt situation. Let's talk about. Let's talk about how it's a huge contrarian indicator, a huge opposite indicator right now that things are going to get better for the silver price and the gold price, okay? Now, you got to, I, I don't know if, if everybody follows me on this one, but I think it's critical to understand if you're an investor in silver and gold. Let me have a sip of coffee. And what I'm talking about right now, look, we are where we are with the silver price, the gold price, the platinum price, and the precious metal mining stocks. But guys, sentiment couldn't be worse. Sentiment is as bad as it's ever, ever been. I heard somebody comment on... Uh, they just went just the last week had gone to the big one of the big gold conferences out in Colorado. He said people were that the CEOs of these companies were just saying like it's not fun anymore. It's you know it's it's like depressing basically to be working in this industry because sentiment is so low. They love their companies, they love the precious metals, but the but the amount of uh, uh, interest in the prices on the stocks is so bad that it's kind of depressing. And if you own any gold or silver mining stocks, you know what they're talking about. My hands up, I do, I've been hurt, I've been wrong through today. I don't think I'm wrong in the long run, but it's been brutal absolutely brutal but could that be a good thing as we look out into let's say the next three months to three years i think it is because i think it's the biggest contrarian indicator when even the ceos are saying this is tough man this is hard right in the silver price the bullion silver price and the bullion gold price, they're also affected by this horrific sentiment. Okay, I mean, silver, silver's, you know, a pretty, I mean, recently we got as high as $30. It's down quite a bit. Gold has done well. Gold has done well primarily because of support from all the central banks, like we talked about, because the central bankers, who are the smartest guys in the room, know that right now it's smart to be buying gold, okay, right, okay, so the stocks have been killed, gold's doing okay only because of central banks, and silver's pretty much been killed as, as, as well, we are where we are, but the good news, okay, <laughs> the good news, right, the good news is when sentiment turns just a little bit, and I will say this to you every day until it happens, because we need to remember this as gold. I mean, we have been beaten to a pulp. We have been, we've been punched and beat up, you know. And I don't know if you've been through situations like this in your life before or not, but you know, it can be extremely, extremely difficult to be patient and to hang in there. I'm not giving financial advice. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm hanging in there because because when when the little bit of that money comes back it's a very it's a lot of capital that's going to need to find its way through a very small window and the only way to get it all through there is to blow that window open which will be extreme moves in the gold price in the silver price and in the mining stocks in particular um, i could be wrong don't make, again, don't make any financial decisions. I'm just telling you what I think could happen and why this n total, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, as bad as it's been, guys, as bad as it's been to be invested in silver, as hard as it's been to be invested in platinum, as hard as it's been to be invested in the precious metal mining stocks, you know, the central bank buying probably isn't going to go anywhere when the investors come back because there's been massive outflows of money from the big ETFs. We don't like the big ETFs, but the fact of the matter remains, they have a big impact on the, the marginal demand for gold and silver as well. And when there's been outflows, that means people are selling their GLD and their SLV. 
That is a downward force. When that turns, and that turns positive, we're not starting from that bad of a spot. We aren't. <laughs> you know, and we're okay right now. Things could get super interesting, like I said, for the silver price, gold price, platinum price, and for all the precious metal mining stocks. And it can happen quick. It will happen quick because it's not going to take much of a move to make things go up significantly. And when there's significant gains, people are going to pay attention. And the double bonus kicker on top of it is a lot of the factors that could lead to that quick gain in the metals prices, in the mining stock prices, okay? They will coincide with difficult times maybe in the real estate market, maybe in the stock market. So all that money, you know, don't forget the entire precious metals mining sector, their mar the market cap of all of it combined is less than the market cap of Home Depot. Can you believe that? Home Depot's market cap, 270, 80, whatever billion it is, the entire market cap of the entire precious metals mining sector is smaller than Home Depot. Right, The place down at the strip mall that's orange where you go buy a two-by-four. These are critical elements, critical metals that people need. Gold, silver, platinum. It is absolutely, absolutely insane. You know, if you're feeling crazy right now, <laughs> being invested in this sector and being a person who wants to t keep, keep their eyes open, keep an eye out for what's going on out there, you're not alone, right? Like we talked about earlier, the system has grown so big, so fragile, so convoluted. Why why were we so concerned with what the Wizard of Oz was telling us last week? Jerome Powell, he's like this little guy, and they are, they're like behind the curtain. We don't know what they're really doing. We don't know what they're really talking about. And they're, you know, feeding out little bits of information once every month about the interest rates. You know, we're living in this fantasy world, fake world. I mean, there's no other way to say it, you know. Uh, uh, I know uh, Putin said that himself when he said, it's, it's, we're, you know, we're done with dealing with this fantasy money, this paper money stuff. You know, why do we feel crazy? Lynette Zhang, Lynette Zhang, again, I always like to repeat this, said people are, because she gets that question all the time, because when things get toward the end, they start to feel super crazy. So if you're feeling crazy, you're not alone. Look, let's talk about the 10-year bond yield. I know you've been, you, that's, that's what you've been waiting for. We got big trouble. Yes, the Wizard of Oz, you know, made his announcement last week, but they're going to be, they're going to be hawkish. So that made rates go up. A 4.5%. Okay. Wow. You know, guess what? Here, here's a keen insight for you. They can't raise rates. They can talk. That's all they can do. He can't really raise rates. And I'm going to tell you why right now. And it'll make perfect, perfect sense. Paul Volcker, you've probably heard this back in 1980, 81, whenever he did it, came in and jacked up interest rates from about 5% to what, 15%? It was crazy to fight inflation. There's a one little difference that we need to factor in now. Right now, there's three to four times more debt in the world. And with the, at the rate at which the Joe Biden's racking up more debt for our country, who knows, it could be four and a half or five times more debt. There's more debt now. So the interest rate that we're at now is really an equivalent to what they did back then with 15%. Jerome has spent all his ammo, shot all his bullets. Now all he can do is talk, right? Verbal jujitsu, or however you want to say it. And when the market wakes up to that, thank you, Neil. God bless America and everyone here. God bless you, Neil. <laughs> Neil Hahn, the platinum guru. Check out Neil's page. He knows our his YouTube channel. He knows he knows platinum like nobody. But now all the Fed can do is talk. And I we talked about that. I'm not saying I'm the soothsayer. I'm wrong all the time. But I was right about that one. I said the Fed's going to keep rates where they are. 
but the Wizard of Oz is going to come out and say, oh, we're going to be tough. We're going to be, we're fighting inflation and persist, rah, 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 right? And you know what? Everybody took it, hook, line, and sinker. They did, unfortunately. Um, but maybe not. And, and I've heard some of the, some, some, of some of the other, not the top analysts, because, you know, us basement dwellers, we're the top analysts, but I heard some other analysts say this. The reaction in the gold and silver market, it, they kind of called their bluff, right? Kind of called Jerome on his bluff and said, yeah, sure, Jerome, you're going to be tough with monetary policy. Yeah, sure, right? If, if the gold market and silver market really believed it, we would have had the gold price down near 18, 17, 1800 or 1750 right now. Not levitating at what, 1930? I mean, guys, the gold price is still pretty darn good. You know, I mean, yes, there's a historic disconnect between the mining stock values and the gold price, but if you're just looking at the gold price, it's pretty darn good. Silver, eh. You know, maybe not that, you know, not horrific. $23, $24 silver is not the end of the world. But we've never seen this disconnect between the miners and the metals prices. I mean, the mining stocks have unbelievable value. That's a great opportunity for me to quickly tell you about First Mining Gold. They're also a channel sponsor. They have two 5 million ounce gold development projects in Canada, Springpole in Ontario, and Duparquet in Quebec. And they have four other projects all located in Canada. They're working with partners on a few of them to actually develop and find more gold. And they're actually looking for more gold at both of those 5 million each ounce projects in Canada. Founded by Keith Newmeyer, CEO Dan Wilton, and if you want to talk to a guy who really knows the company and is an awesome top-notch person, Paul Morris, their investor relations, his email is in the description of this video. You can reach out to Paul. He'd be happy to tell you about the company and answer any questions you may have. But the value right now, not just with First Mining Gold, but any of the development companies is crazy because guys the big miners the big guys the barracks and the newmonts and the big big mining companies that are already mining right now they have neglected their pipeline they always need to be feeding more property more ounces into their pipeline and they've neglected that because they're honestly they were paying off debt for the last 10 years right and now they're making really good money big mining companies are generally doing very well in this 1900 1950 gold environment they are making a lot of cash and they are going to need to deploy that cash to buy up new properties right development properties like a company like first mining gold they aren't mining right now, but they have the gold. It's already been drilled. It's been discovered, and it's been um, uh, they they put together uh, resource estimates based upon scientific process, which I can't get into. But nonetheless, they're going to need to find more gold. The big companies and the places they're going to go looking are going to be these development companies. To, uh, check them out. Check out First Mining Gold. Check out the other ones because I'm telling you, I'm not giving financial advice, but I can say that they are price-wise a great value right now. Here's, some, here's a note I had to myself. You want to hear a, a note that I wrote to myself? <laughs> Silver and gold investors, yes, that would include you, I'm sure, and me. Are you ready for the price to skyrocket? Huh? Unfortunately, we're going to have some nasty, nasty, really cruddy things to deal with first. And they aren't going to tell you about this on the Children's News Network, CNN. Look, I watch a little CNN. I watch a little MSNBC. Thank you for that super chat. Wow. I'm going to try to read that. Okay. But we got nastiness coming our way, heading down the track at us right now. Hold on a second. G. Malian, thank you, my friend, for that super chat. Super appreciated. 
On an individual, we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. On an individual basis, right, 66% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. We have record levels of credit card debt. We have credit card delinquencies skyrocketing right now in this country. You're going to tell me that the economy is healthy? Huh? Do you know that you and me, the consumer, right? We are the backbone of the U.S. economy. We like to borrow money and buy stuff. I don't. I hope you don't either. But on average, that's what Americans do. They borrow money and they go get more stuff. Look at my basement. A lot of this came from garage sales, but that's a different story. And now I got a cat biting my knee. Sorry about that. Um, so you're going to tell me we're in good shape when 66% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck? Right? And I think they say that even in urban areas, it's closer to 70% of people are living paycheck to paycheck, barely scraping by. Right, Their credit cards are maxed out. There's no savings. Um, and there's something else they're doing as well. They're even taking money out of their 401k. Really? Okay. So that's the consumer in the United States. What about on a national basis? It is, it is, it's downright nasty right now. <clears throat> Three things to look at. The national debt, right? $33 trillion in debt. Guys, that's real. That's real money. Huh? That's what you and me and our kids and maybe your grandkids, that money is real. That's money that's owed. Only $33 trillion, Only like, what, 250000 per uh, per working adult in this country, you can go to the U.S. debt clock and, and look and look at it yourself, <clears throat> okay? It's real. The debt is huge. It's getting bigger because we have a de deficit. We know the economy is slowing down, right? And, and we know politically in this country we've never been. So I don't know if you're a Democrat or a Republican. Whatever you are, I'm happy for you, you know? But we are divided, I have a feeling most of us basement dwellers, uh, you that are with me now, right now in this live stream, that we get along, we're cool, but there's a massive divide in this country, in your neighborhood, in my neighborhood, between hardcore uh, conservatives and these liberals, right? You got people that are hardcore conservative and you have these liberals who are, uh, let's just say very liberal, right? All kinds of new creative things. For in terms of how the world should work. Yeah, uh, but we are divided. We're going to leave it at that. <clears throat> so the consumer is in big trouble. On a national basis, we're in big, big trouble. And we just got 200 thumbs up. Oh, now we got 199. Somebody unthumbed up us. <laughs> hey, how about a thumbs up? Yeah, now we're back to 200. Come on, guys. We can do this. 201. I think we're safe. I think we're in the green. This bell came from our good friend Joe. I don't know if he's on the live stream or not. Great guy. Came down here to the basement, and uh, I ring it. I ring bells when we get to 100, 200, 300, and even 400 thumbs up. So thank you for the thumbs up. It helps get the word out. The consumer is suffering. Most Americans are suffering right now. You know, um, on a national basis, unfortunately, we're suffering right now, okay? But there's more. Because when we zoom out, like we talked about earlier, the world is suffering. We aren't getting along either, right? In, the, in America, we're fighting, Right between the, the the Democrats and the Republicans is the easiest way to say it. But what about on a worldwide basis? Are we fighting? Uh, yeah, we talked about that earlier. We're actually have a war in Europe. Let that sink in. Right now, we have a war in Europe, and we have an explicit, announced, organized. A group of countries that have come out and said, we don't like the United States. We don't like playing by the United States rules. So, yes, on a worldwide basis, we're also suffering. 
uh, are things worse than the mainstream media is feeding to the U.S. public? It, 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 it feels, again, we'll go back to what Lynette Zhang said. Things are crazy right now. Probably, I'm 53 years old. I don't know how old you are. Probably crazier than, than any other time in, in history. Um, and, you know, it's just crazy. Here, let me, I'll read the. Here's another note I had to myself. Credit card debt. Four people are pulling money out of their 401k. We didn't even talk about the fact that uh, at the end of this month, millions of Americans are going to be, this is, this is mind-blowing to me, millions and millions of Americans who took out loans to go to college, student loan debt, right? You know, you can't discharge that during a bankruptcy. That's not, not possible. <clears throat> they were um, excused from class. <laughs> they were excused from needing to pay their student loans for like three years. That's going to start. They're going to be required to start paying their student loans again. That they signed on the dotted line, they borrowed the money, they went off to their school and got their degree, whatever they did with it, whatever, but they agreed that they would pay that money back. There's like a huge percentage of them that are, when they're doing like polls of these people that are saying, uh, sorry, I can't pay it back, and I'm just not going to pay it back. It's it's very ugly. Mortgage rates, Coin Shop, Chris and I, we got a video was out this afternoon. You can uh, go check that out. Please do. Um, mortgage rate. I mean, mortgages. It's nutty. Here's a great example. Here, here's here that. Here's a great example. The house, three houses down the street from me. Three years ago, would have sold for about three hundred thousand dollars, and at a three percent interest rate, you know, let's just say the payment would be, just for simplicity's sakes, we'll say sixteen hundred dollars. Today, mortgage rates are approaching eight percent, so the payment's going to go way up, almost double. But the price on the house has also gone way up. People cannot afford housing. Housing used to be 30% on average of Americans' uh, take-home pay. That has now gone all the way up to like 44, approaching 45%. People need somewhere to sleep and live, and they need food, right? If food, if food prices haven't gone up, right? Yeah, sure, food's become much more affordable. I mean, I just, I go to Aldi, right? I'm cheap, I'm cheap. Some Susie, you know, Susie can tell you, she'll attest. The bag of chips that three years ago used to cost a dollar nine cents now cost two dollars and sixty nine cents. Food's gone up through the roof. What else do we need? Well, we need to be able to get to Aldi, so we need some form of transportation. Car prices have skyrocketed. And what's that liquid stuff you need to put in your car to make it go? Yeah, oil, gasoline, skyrocketed. It's not looking good, guys. And then on top of that, this is not an auto repair show, but we'll talk about this. Car repair costs have gone up nearly 25% in the last couple of years. All right? It's crazy. It's going to be an interesting ride. Are we headed towards a big, major breakdown? That's the question. Right? When the system has to be reset. When, when, um, when things change drastically right below our very feet, you know, we, it's, it's very confusing and scary to think about it, but I just, I don't know your thoughts on this, but my gut instinct 100% tells me that if anything if anything is going to hold its value, if anything is going to hold its value through all this turmoil, it will be silver. It will be gold. It will be platinum. It will be land. It will be real assets. Because this is just paper. This is still, I could go buy a candy bar, maybe, at the dollar store. <laughs> I could get a candy bar. That's just paper. Electronic is just electronic. The real stuff. Let me see what I have around here that I can show you, right? Huh? Here, Coin Shop Chris gave me this a while back. Silver Buffalo. Real. Real. It was valuable two days ago. It was valuable <clears throat> two
two months ago. It was valuable 200 years ago. Was this valuable? Was this valuable 200 years ago? What about, what about uh, 2,000 years ago? Do you think that was valuable? People would probably be amazed, like, what is that? <laughs> but was it valuable? Did it have any real value? There goes Jasper the cat again. He's, he will not leave me alone today. It's going to be super interesting. Here's Mary Radcliffe. We bought a house that the basement was blown out. My husband is a bricklayer. He jacked up the house. Oh, cool. Wow. That's pretty cool, Mary. But built a new foundation. I have to come check that basement out sometime. Maybe I could do a guest appearance in Mary's basement. Mary's been a critical part of helping grow the channel. Hello, Jake. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Jake, it's paper. I know, man. It's like, it's like, it blows my mind, right? That that this can be exchanged for metal. It just blows my mind. Yes. Yeah, Jasper's an old school gangster. He is. He's a, he's an interesting boy, that's for sure. Um, Marshmaz says, Fiat currency, rest in peace, 2023. No doubt. Uh, it'll be interesting, Marshmaz. I don't, you know... And William Middlecoop said this as well. He said what he sees is that <coughs> is that um, it's not like it's likely that you know like the dollar is going to be completely gone, completely destroyed. Right? It's possible. It's possible. But that we're going to be living in a new system where there's two separate um, two separate systems altogether, and that is not going to be good for the value of the US dollar. We don't think that like oh the dollar is going to be gone by the it could. It could. Uh uh Marshmallows, I'm not arguing with that. It's definitely within. But but at the end of the day what's more likely to happen is a new system emerges. What I think is interesting about it is uh and and, and most people don't agree with me on this, but I think you know, I would put forth two arguments. Number 1, We've never really gone off the gold, silver, and I could say platinum standard as well, right? You can you can convert your paper dollars, like Jake was, I was just saying, for uh, for metal. So there's the, you know you're you're still able to value the dollar in gold, let's say, okay. But but as the world, as Russia and China and Brazil and India and Argentina and Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates all gain economic power and all also recognize right the value of precious metals we could be put into a situation where it's going to force to one degree or another the United States onto recognizing a gold standard i, I hope that makes sense it makes sense in my mind and again, to me, it goes back to it's just the natural way. It's always, you know, gold and silver have been, you know, uh, the, the earth's money, God's money, some people call it. I don't know. It's going to be very, very, very interesting. Uh, one dollar equals one square of toilet paper. Coin shop, Chris. <laughs> gold and oil will be the end game. All right, guys, I'm going to tune out. I don't know if I'll be on tomorrow or not. Uh, I'm supposed to bring my daughters and their friend to the Fright Fest at Six Flags. Um, I don't know what time we're going to go. I'll do my best to maybe get on sometime in the morning with you guys. Uh, Jake, thank you. Coin Shop Chris, of course, thank you. Okay, your help is uh, super appreciated. Mary Radcliffe, thank you. I think Neil was on here as well. Thank you. Snakebite, thank you. Tony Erickson. Hey, you guys are great. Cranky Stacker. <laughs> Marshmaz, right? Marco, Dwayne Libby, Leaf Johnson, Sassy Silver. Thank you, Sassy Silver. You're a great supporter of the channel. Dinar. Uh, yeah, and the awesome mods. Yeah, they do a great, great job. If you guys ever have questions, be sure you put them into the, into the comment section. These guys really go out of their way to answer questions um it's gonna be a fun ride you know right now i know look i you know i got I, I wanted some of the other people to get out of here i want to tell you something i know okay 
it's been it's been challenging the last couple years. We aren't beaten to a pulp, although we're semi beaten to a pulp. Things could get it can change so quick for the silver and gold market, okay, and the platinum market and the precious metal mining stock market. It can change very quickly. And we've been through what feels like to me now like a six-month period of artificial calm, you know. Who knows what's brewing beneath the beneath the surface? I'm telling you, those 10-year bond rates, if they stay around four and a half, if they get up near five, that could be like spooky, scary time. And maybe it'll happen right around Halloween. I don't know. We'll have to find out. Hey, this is a big deal that you're here. I appreciate you. I appreciate you joining me, each and every one of you. You know, we're in this battle together and we're going to hang tight and I'll see you. I'll probably see you tomorrow. Thank you.